rebuilding a Tangi model steam engine, part 11, milling the external shape of the crosshead and a loose assembly of the parts. And back over at the Proxon milling machine and putting the crosshead into the machine vise. This very well made Proxon EF70 milling machine is a great piece of equipment, but for very small jobs. And when I look at the amount of material I now have to remove, I think I would be better off doing it in a bigger milling machine. Using the EF70 for milling the slot down into the crosshead using a cutter like this one was quite a good idea. Although it did seem to take quite a long time to do that, I showed it in the last video and the milling footage was very heavily edited because it took a long time to mill that slot. And when I started to rush the job, I broke one of the cutters. For this part of the operation, I'm going to use my larger milling machine and here it is in action. I'm using a quarter of an inch diameter slot drill to do this job and it's fitted directly into an R8 collet which is in the spindle nose. When I first got this milling machine over 30 years ago, I bought an R8 taper Clarkson milling chuck and it was never that good because I didn't always have the collets that I needed and most of them were metric. But generally speaking, I work using imperial sizes so it's really good to be able to put a quarter of an inch cutter into a quarter of an inch collet directly into the spindle. I bought this R8 collet set from RDG Tools, a company which is quite close to where I live. And I don't know why I didn't buy them years ago. Anyway, here they are, R8 collets, milling cutter in position, and I'm milling the shape of the crosshead. I scratched a rough shape in the marking out blue, just so you can see where I'm going with the cutter. I recommend doing this job by removing the bulk of the material first on the flat part of the crosshead, then cut the angles at the side, after which reposition the component in the machine vise square and mill the rest down to the scribed line. Before profiling the other side of the crosshead, I needed to remove some material because it was a little bit too long. It's always a good idea to start with the parts slightly oversized because you can remove the surplus metal. If the part is undersized, you can't put it back. This crosshead is more of a complicated shape at this side, so after I finished the milling process, I completed the job by using a small needle file. All I'm doing here with this needle file is rounding off the middle part of the crosshead. And here I'm cleaning up the front surface on a piece of wetted rice sandpaper. Time now to put all the components together, but first of all I need to remove the cylinder cover. I'm making a mark underneath so I know which way to put it back when I reassemble it. And this isn't bad engineering on my part for a change. The cylinder cover's okay, but the holes in the cylinder are not equidistant from each other, which puzzles me for a commercially made item. I don't know anything about the history of this engine, maybe it was a kit to start with, I really don't know. In this clip I'm fitting the piston that I made, and here you can see why I drilled the two holes for the circlet pliers. As a starting point I only screwed the piston into the crosshead part of the way in. In this clip I'm checking the clearance of the crosshead and the piston rod gland nut. And the clearance seems to be fine, but unfortunately the piston's now sticking out of the cylinder at the other end. And when I screwed the piston rod further into the crosshead there was a problem. It was hitting the other end of the cylinder. Thinking that maybe my piston that I made completely freehand was too thick, I thought I would make a quick test piston that was much thinner. And if it comes down to it I could use a very thin o-ring. As usual, a bit of emery cloth to remove the sharp edges. And in this clip, I'm parting off the very thin piston blank. Any piston in a steam engine needs to be completely concentric with the piston rod. So first of all, I'm using some Loctite 603 retainer. And with the piston blank in the main chuck and the piston rod in the tailstock chuck, I assemble the parts. Obviously, the piston rod is now too long, so here I am machining it away and taking a quick skim across the front of the piston at the same time. Something is not right, the piston should not be this thin, so when I put it into the engine, I'm expecting to have plenty of clearance. The piston fits in the cylinder okay, in fact it's a bit too good, so I'm just rotating the part with a bit of oil, using my trusty DeWalt drill. And in no time at all, everything freed off. So here is the problem, I rotate the crankshaft, and the crosshead is pulling past the guides at both ends an equal amount. But there isn't any tolerance hardly at all. When the crosshead moves to the right, even this very small piston is touching the casting inside the cylinder at the right hand side. And when the crosshead moves to the left, 
the piston is trying to come out of the cylinder and would hit the cylinder cover if that was in place, so obviously this is no good. I'm beginning to think that someone in the past has had the same problem as this. OK, I've made some new parts, but I would think the originals didn't work either. So what am I going to do about it? Well, you'll have to wait till the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.